Hello saplings! Okay, today we have a reading lesson and this is one of those lessons where we have four parts follow-up work. Yay! Um, so today we're going to be reading a play and so that'll be a lot of fun if you want to, you know, you can choose to read it along with me or you can turn the video off and read it yourself. You can practice it with, you know, your parents, your siblings, however you want to do this. Um, it'll be a lot of fun. And we're going to practice story structure, which we are not new to, um, where we use a graphic organizer and we look at our setting, which it's nice in a play because there's what's called stage directions. Um, you'll see it there in, it's the words written in an italic and they'll set the scene. Um, and because it's a play that has to be described on how, what the scenery, you know, looks like and all of that. And then um, there's lots of characters in this play. So, you know, of course you're gonna be narrowing it down to our, our, our main characters. And then what's a little different about our, our plot for this is that in a play we have scenes. So this particular play, there are three scenes so you're going to be giving kind of like the synopsis, the main, you know, the plot points of what happened in each of those three scenes. Okay. So that's like your, your part one follow-up work. Uh, so just to get us started, there's your vocabulary that I will include in the PDF of this lesson. Um, we're not going to go over it. You can read through the words again, you know, like... Challenge yourself if there's some words that you're not so familiar with, you need to look up, go for it. You can challenge yourself to use it speaking in a sentence or write it in a sentence, you know, have fun with it. Um, like I said, there's our, our target skill is story structure. You can read more if you want to review what it is. I, I said it, and if you need to, like, read more about it, there it is. There's a graphic organizer we're going to be using. Um, the topic of our play is social relationships, and this reads, The huge rock El Capitan rises out of the beautiful Yosemite Valley of California. The Milwaukee, um, or I'm sorry, Miwok are American Indians whose ancestors lived in the valley for hundreds of years. For centuries, the Miwok have told a myth that explains how the rock first came to be. Yet the myth tells more than that. It shows that Miwok believed... It was important for a community to come together to help each other in times of trouble. In Two Bear Cubs, you'll read the Miwok myth as a play. You'll see how the animals try to help when two bear cubs and their mother are in need. So, there's the El Capitan. All right. Two Bear Cubs. Uh, the playwright is Robert D. San Sauchi. Illustrator Tracy Walker. Okay. And it says Two Bear Cubs from Miwok Myth, adapted by Robert D. Sansauchi. There's our characters. See how we have so many characters. All right, our prologue. That's kind of our setting up of the story. So these are what we call the stage directions here in parentheses and italics. We don't need to read those out loud. That just tells the, the action of, of what the character is supposed to do. So the story, to, the character of the storyteller would enter from stage left onto the, the stage and then say their part. Many snows have come and gone since the story was first told. My people, the Miwok, live in California some in what is now called Yosemite Valley. We tell stories of the old days when animal people lived in the valley. One story begins with Mother Grizzly going to the river to catch fish for herself and her cubs. We can see some setting here. All right, in scene one, here we go. Don't be afraid of a little water, younger brother. I'm not, older brother. Children, stop scaring away the fish or we will have nothing to eat. Out of the water now. I want you to go gather berries, but stay close and do not go down river. Strange things happen there. 
Look at these berries. They are so sweet. Taste them. We should take them back to mother. I have eaten too many. We will bring some back later. Oh, I am full too. Let's see what's down river. We're not supposed to go there. I see only the river and trees and stones. What is there to fear? Oh, I'm tired. The hot sun in my full belly made me want to sleep. Oh, a nap would be good. See that big flat rock? It looks so warm. Let's rest there. The cubs fell asleep on the stone, but the stone was the seed of a mountain. As they slept, the stone grew bigger and bigger, higher and higher. It carried them so high that only Hawk saw them as he flew up, as he flew by. Meanwhile, Mother Grizzly wondered what had become of her cubs. Older brother! Younger brother! Fox, Badger, have you seen my cubs? No, I have been helping Badger build a new home. Neither of us have seen them. We will help you look for them. Mother dear, my little ones are missing. Have you seen them? They have not come by while my children and I were grinding acorns, but we will help you find them. Mountain lion, we are looking for my lost cubs. I will help you find them. Mouse, have you seen my cubs? We have searched everywhere for them. We have looked in hollow logs and caves and in the berry patch and the honey tree. No, but I will help you. Perhaps they went down river. I warned them not to go there. Sometimes our little ones do not listen very well. I agree that we should look down river. Look, everyone, there is a mountain where there was only a stone before. I see Hawk. Hawk, have you seen my lost cubs? They are asleep on this strange new mountain. Please fly to my children, wake them, and help them find their way down. The wind will not let me reach your little ones. Someone will have to climb up and rescue them. One by one, the animals tried to reach the cubs. Mother Grizzly tried several times, but always tumbled back. Mouse jumped from stone to stone, but quickly got scared and jumped back down. Badger climbed a bit higher, Mother Deer a little bit higher, Fox did even better, but none succeeded. Even Mountain Lion failed. Mountain Lion, you are the best climber and were my best hope. There is no one now who can save my cubs. I will try. <laughs> They're all laughing. <laughs> Foolish measuring worm, do you think you can do what the rest of us have failed to do? Tip tock a na, your name is longer than you are. My people call measuring worm to tock a na, which means little curl stretch. He moves by stretching to. Then curling, talk, the way a caterpillar moves. I welcome your help. To talk. To talk. To talk. In time.
time, Measuring Worm climbed higher, climbed even higher than Mountain Lion. He climbed so high that the animals below could no longer see or hear him. Sometimes he would grow afraid and stop when he saw how high he had climbed and how much higher he had to go. Then he thought about poor Mother Grizzly so worried at the bottom of the mountain. He thought about the cubs in danger at the top. Then he found his courage again and continued to climb, all the while crying, Too tuck, too tuck, too tuck! Younger brother, something terrible has happened. Look how high we are. We are trapped here. We will never get back to our mother. <laughs> I have come to guide you safely down the mountain. Just follow me and do as I say. We will follow the safe path that brought me here. I am afraid I will fall. I am scared too. Surely Mother Grizzly's children are not so afraid, for she is the bravest creature in the valley. We are Grizzlies. We are brave. We will follow you. Grizzly, look! Measuring Worm is guiding your cubs down the mountain. <gasps> Be careful, my children! Trust Measuring Worm. He has brought them safely this far. He will not fail you now. <gasps> Both of you have been very naughty. Look at the trouble and worry you have caused us all. You did not listen to me and went where you were not supposed to go. I'm sorry, I won't do it again. <laughs> I will never disobey you again. Be sure that you remember what happened today, but do not cry, little ones. It has all ended well, thanks to the help and courage of Measuring Worm. Then all the animals decided to call the new mountain Tutak Anula, which means Measuring Worm Stone. This was to honor the heroic worm who did what no other creature could do. He saved the two bear cubs. The mountain held this name for many years until newcomers named the mountain El Capitan. We Miwok still call the mountain Tutak Anula to this day. The So on the page before, it had a little thing to just think about the story message. Which character's actions give an example for readers to follow? And what does this tell you about the story's message? So think back to our topic on social relationships and how what every, all the characters did and, of course, measuring worm. Maybe you can think of what the message of this um, myth is about. So I've already gone over your part one of your follow-up work is, again, you can read this for some more details. And on your piece of paper, make this chart. It's obviously not going to be this small because you need to have room to write the setting, write the characters, incomplete sentences, and um, your plot for scene one, scene two, and scene three. All right? So this graphic organizer should actually take up like an entire page because you will need room to write your complete sentences with your text evidence. Uh, story message we'll read a little bit more about. Traditional stories like two pair cubs have a message. The message says something important about life or how to live. The message is not directly stated. They didn't come right out and say, the message of the story is. Instead, readers must look at how the characters act and what happens in the story. These details, or text evidence, can help readers answer the questions. What can I learn about life from this story? What is the story's message? And I'm not going to say 
you can look at the character's actions and figure out what is the story's message. Uh, you don't have to do this. This is optional work if you would like. Part two is dun, 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 your response. Part two. Measuring Worm helps bring the cubs back safely to Mother Grizzly. What qualities did he show when helping the cubs? Use text evidence to write a character description of Measuring Worm. So we've talked about character traits. He will have more than one character trait. So go on and use your text evidence to, to talk, to write your um, character description of Measuring Worm with complete sentences, full paragraph. Okay, so your topic sentence is in relation to the character description of Measuring Worm is, shows that he has these character traits. In the story, he shows the character trait of when he does this. Okay, so that's an example. So have your more than one character trait with text evidence and your topic sentence and your concluding sentence for part two of your work. Um, part three has to do with our short informational text. So we'll read that now. And this one is set up in kind of like a newspaper. We've got like some nice photographs with captions. It says today's news. Whose land is it? By Ellen Gold. People and wild animals. So that's the our title or heading. People and animals need places to live. Animals have lived in the wilderness for thousands of years. They live in ancient forests, oceans, and other habitats. Yet wild animals also live in people's yards. They live in cities, too. So here's our photograph. There's a coyote. Caption. Oops. Caption says, Coyotes are no strangers to city. One even walked into a restaurant in Chicago within moments a panicking worker had climbed onto the counter. Hmm. Habitat loss. Kind of hard for me to see here. Why are wild animals moving closer to people? They are losing their habitats. Then they must find new places to live. Fires destroy many animals' homes. Some years are especially fiery. In 2006, fires burned nearly 10 million acres of wild land in the United States. People destroy habita habitats, too. People build homes, stores, and roads where wild animals live. In Florida, many homes are near swamps and waterways. These are places where alligators live. So, you can see here is a picture of an alligator going into a swimming pool. Running into an unexpected alligator can be horrifying. People may have to take emergency steps like having a trapper catch the animal. But that's what happens. Changing ways. Alligators have been around since prehistoric times. They mostly fear people, yet that may be changing. Why is this? The reason is far from mysterious. Some people feed alligators. Then those alligators stop fearing people. They may think that all people will feed them. Other animals link people to, feed, to food, too. Scientists, um, scientific experts know a lot about black bears. Country bears look for food during the day. City bears eat at night. They know that people put out garbage. So city bears find food in dumpsters and trash cans. How can people keep bears away? People need to change their habits. They should use bear-proof trash cans. They should fasten the cans immediately after use. If bears can't get food, they won't come back. Okay. So, your part three of your work is... Doing your comparing text, you choose one of these prompts. Your text to text, I won't read all this. Um, text to text, text to self, or text to world, choose one of those, write your paragraph. All right? And then part four is your short little grammar lesson. Um, this deals with more irregular verbs. You can look over your, um, your box here, your present, present tense, past tense, and then with the helping verbs and then again you're obviously not working with a partner unless it's your parent or something read the sentences choose the correct verb for each sentence so you're gonna you can just you know number your paper one through five and put in the correct verb 
so it shouldn't take you very long at all. And then here are more examples, okay? And that's it, all right? Um, so enjoy this reading language arts lesson. I hope that you um, read the play more than once. Practice it to the because you could see it was hard for me to do the actions. Um, so read it more than once so you know like what you're supposed to do and with the stage directions and act it out as you're reading it. All right? So have fun.